Hello, and welcome to the Sick Folks of Cinema podcast, where we talk about horror movies. We are we are mostly comedians. Um, <laughs> aside from one of us is a is a tech services you know guru, and and another one of us is like is like not really a comedian so much as a hack. I'm not gonna say which one. Wait, hold on. Wait, who, <laughs> look, I got the microphone and everything. Um. And uh, and uh, and my name is Heather Rogue. I will be hosting tonight on this wonderful podcast of ours. Um, <clears throat> to one of the directions of me is uh, the uh, Keith Graber. It's uh, me. Um, he's a person. Uh, we also have Stina. Me. Um, you can tell who she is by the sound of her voice because it's. Uh, very unique. Um, <laughs> I like how you put that. <laughs> and compared compared to mine, which is also unique, but in a different way. Um, and then finally, last but not least, we have the glorious, uh, the incredible, the majestic Stefan Bowman. Um, hello. hello, hello, Stefan. Um, giving us a funny face. Uh, for for all of those all all of our many YouTube viewers uh, who can see <laughs> our faces versus the people who just listen to the podcast, uh, all the millions of those people. Um, <clears throat> so to today, what we're going to talk about first of all next is what people have been watching lately, and I just want to I just you know I just I just want to ask Stina what what have you been watching? Me. Uh, um, what have I been watching this week? I watched um a lot of Breaking Bad. Still on the Breaking Bad train. Season three is probably my favorite so far, and we're almost at the end of it, but it's way better than season one and two, I have to say. Um, but aside from that, I think that's all I've really been watching. I haven't really been on a TV binge this week. Some you know, some weeks you just wanna lay around and just spend hours watching tv other weeks you know i just i wanted to go out there and live my life but yeah breaking bad still got me hooked we can't all be stephens Stina. right yeah Some i need us... i needed a, I need a break <laughs> and also it's also hard to when you're binging something that's that has that many seasons that's that old it's hard to diversify your watching throughout the week you know yeah, like it's it's funny because sometimes I just need like a all right, let's break it up with um Ed really likes Venture Brothers. So we'll break it up with Venture Brothers or Venture. with like um the Goldbergs. I myself am a huge fan of the Goldbergs because when I grow up, if not like it's already happening, I will become Beverly Goldberg. So it's fun <laughs> seeing what my future is gonna look like. But yeah, with those like really long shows, you have to break it up or else we had to do that with American Horror Story. We watched like five seasons in a row before we were like, let's give <laughs> something else to try, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been watching. What about you, Keith? Um, what have I been watching? Okay, so I have been, horror-wise, I've been keeping up. Uh, I've been trying to diversify. I did some Tubi cruising and I hated my life. Uh, didn't have Just any bullets on to the put TV. in the gun, so I moved on. Um, <laughs> yeah, most expensive these days. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, start, I, I went back and watched a few more episodes of the Haunted series in, on Netflix, which is those sort of like real life accounts. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. So th it's, it's good. Some of them are better than others. Uh, it's creepy. It's scary. Uh, it feels real. And I feel like there's this debate. I, I can't get to the bottom of whether it's real or not, whether they're real stories or whether mm -hmm. they're, I mean, who knows? I'm a cynic. I don't, I don't yeah. believe that they're actually real stories, but whether those people actually think that they're real, whether they're, you know, or acting it out, mm -hmm. I don't know, or it's scripted. And those shows are fun, especially when, you know, a show is good like that when it doesn't really matter if they are real or not. You want them to be real mm -hmm. because that's how good the stories and the actors are. Yeah. Or the and people even, 
like I said before, even the dramatizations on those stories are better than some of the horror movies I watch. Um, <laughs> they they get it's probably a little easier because they're they're short, um, and the story's already written and it's you know quote unquote real. But um, yeah, it's just it is it is a good watch if you're in the horror. So I would definitely suggest it. And anybody out there listening or watching, if you know something say something put it in the chat if you know it's real or it's not real let us know somebody um, help keith out <laughs> yeah the other <laughs> thing start watching that the other thing that i watched i'll tell you this and synchronicity it happens to me all the time I, people don't believe it and it sounds like a little minor thing but i just randomly sat down with uh my wife and a pizza i love them both and uh, we were, and we opened up Amazon. We we're like, "Hey, just watch a movie. Let's pick something that we've had in the list for a long time." And we watched Rocket Man, um, the Elton John story. Oh yeah, yes. And it stars Stephen Graham, who's also in the movie we're reviewing today. And I was like, "God damn, really? Like, I couldn't set this up if I tried." <laughs> you know That's funny. But uh, Rocket Man was good. Um, I like those uh, music music based biopics i don't necessarily care for the musicals um and this one this one was weird it didn't really need it it was like a hat on a hat on a hat um when it went into musical mode um because there's so much good material on elton john the songs are fucking brilliant um it's a good story anyway you know it's moving and it, there's a lot of emotion involved with it you don't need to go into musical mode and start dancing in the streets and throwing shit in the air and acting like the surrealist environment. That's the part I don't like about musicals. It's like, I, I, mm -hmm. it, takes, I'm, I, it takes me right out of it. I'm watching actors dance now and I know that and I'm not being immersed in a story. So that's why I don't like those. I don't it's think just, I like anything about musicals. Yeah. Um, I, you know, <laughs> musical uh, based you know, stories can be done well, like when they're just, when the, the music is sort of intrinsic to the, to what's happening, you know, like mm -hmm. it's just a performance in there. That's fine. But when you start, you know, when the mailman start, you know, start singing about like, <laughs> oh, my woes of carrying the mail, like fuck off, fuck right <laughs> off with this shit. I'm not. So I like doing that in real life. Like, that's what I think is I think we should switch it and we should make real life more like musicals but then ban them from television because they're awful. All right, I'll give it a shot. I'm down. Whatever. But yeah. Could you guys want, we could be I mean, start right now. Let's do this podcast as if it's a musical. How about that? Close enough. Feels kind of cheap think, too. I don't think yeah. the boys are on, on board with that. I was going to say me personally, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, a musical theater geek. I love musicals. It only uh, takes. I was. I was a theater. Little rhythm. Theater. Yeah. <laughs> little hop in the step of what you're saying. <laughs> or to turn this whole podcast into a musical now. The only musical that I'd be okay with is a man with a gun that never runs out of bullets, and he's going around singing about killing people, and he's like a maniac. So the lyrics are just fucking bizarre as fuck, and it's weird. And it never sounds like he's a professional singer. Killing people. <laughs> <laughs> but people die like every like 15 why, to 30 seconds. To <laughs> it's got to be a hot like 100 body count. And then I'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, horror musicals exist. No, I, I mean, know. <laughs> you know, Sweeney Todd. There's a... Uh, I can't do that. Do I love to horror musicals <laughs> like, like, can you name me a musical like... I mean, I guess Sweeney Todd, mm, there might have been a couple of moments where I was like a little tense, like, what's he going to do with the dude on the chair? When's he going to like kill him? You know, mm -hmm. but like <laughs> for the most part, yeah, it kind of like it takes the tension out of it when it suddenly becomes a musical <laughs> and then you can enjoy it because it's like titillating, you know, but not <laughs> fucking scary. So there's like. There's like genre horror where it's like, we're going to play with the elements of horror. And then there's like, we're going to actually scare the shit out of you, you know? Yeah, the, it, I don't think I've ever seen a musical that's actually like scared me. Which, let me tell you, if that happened, if someone... Cats? 
Yes, I I hate cats. I the the hate new cats. I, mean, I haven't seen the new one. I've seen just... it on stage, and I was like, absolutely not. No, thank you. I've seen it once. That's enough for me. <laughs> I did say with the new uh, cats, the you know the new the one with Taylor Swift and Jennifer Hudson. I was like, I want to get fucking just blown out of my mind, just high and watch it. That's the only way I will watch it. <laughs> Because it'll take me out of like I'm watching cats, because that's too much for me. I don't I'm even know if I have enough cats. weed to make I mean, myself. It brought do that. on like, the fall of <laughs> like well, ever okay. since cats came out, like all sorts of bad shit's been happening, like nonstop. It's really and like watching it, it really feels like a, like you're seeing like a live action, just like trumpet of the apocalypse sounding off. You know what I mean? Oh, we're yes. gonna die. Like it, it's almost like a biblically <laughs> terrifying creation of a movie, you know. And then cats started dancing. I'm waiting for the version singing. where they have buttholes. <gasps> ah. Yeah, that was a big controversy. I don't know why they decided, like, you know what? These terrifying humanoid cats, that's fine. But buttholes, that's that too much. Well, we saw <laughs> the much. junk, right? Yeah, they just, they, well, I mean, they, I I would figure that they would, like, kind of, like, Ken doll, like, Barbie doll, their junk. No, but, but their buttholes, really? Wasn't like, that's it recently like, yeah. one of the guys had, like, a huge dong? Oh, the, yeah. The most recent um, uh, release of it? I'm sorry, yeah. release was a bad choice of words. Um, Idris Elba, I think? Yeah. Yeah, his cat was, like. Big dog. Hello. Meow. He wasn't. Yes. He, wasn't <laughs> he wasn't neutered, apparently. Um, oh, my. <laughs> no, but that's, that's a totally uh, fair request because cats, that's all they do is show their buttholes. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, any cat owners out there want to chime in? On I mean, this? they work hard to clean it, right? So, like, I get it because if I work that you? hard on something all day, I'm going to someone to see my work, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Look at how pink that shit is. Do you, you know? see this? I mean, <laughs> I hey, you want to smell it? I smell it. it. Come on, come on. Okay, oh, Stefan, what have you been watching? <laughs> uh, cat buttholes all day long out the window. Amazing. Why, why do you have to? No, this is why I changed the topic. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned it last week, but I did watch Screen Queen uh, on Freddy. It's a Freddy's Revenge documentary mm -hmm. about how they believe it's the first uh, Freddy's Revenge. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is the first uh, considered the first queer horror movie. At least that's what they're saying. Um, I finished uh, Mr. Robot season four. So I finished all of uh, Mr. Robot. Um, season four is nice. fucking weird. Uh, seasons one through three, though, very good. If you're a fan of like uh, David Fincher, Fight Club, uh, and like anything with like hackers type stuff, really, really, really good. The writing on that man, goddamn, that dude needs to write some movies if he hasn't already. Uh, and then I finished at midnight, or started at midnight on HBO Max, the new uh, uh, what is it, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, about the gentleman who was um, leading the Black Panthers in what was oh. it? Um, uh, I've seen state. that trailer. Yeah, I forget what state it was he was leading it in and what happened to him. And man, dude, FBI, <laughs> local police. Wow, dude. I, I my my heart goes out to his family, man. They they did him dirty. That's all I'll say. But Jesus Christ, they did him real dirty. Like it was it, it fucked, dude. It was fucked. Like the fact it's it's like now that we have the internet, now that we have all these body cams and people with cell phones filming shit, now you get a little bit more deeper into some of the, you know, the shit, fucked up shit people do that's really corrupt. Uh, back then, we didn't have a lot of that stuff. So, you know, uh, I can't imagine the stuff that went on. I, I can't even fathom, like, the amount of insanity. Um, and then I watched a documentary for which my dumb ass should have wrote down. And it was about this uh, British taxi guy who uh, was a serial killer. And oh. Um, oh, yeah, it was crazy. And a lot of his victims got thrown out of court. Uh, this doesn't necessarily spoil it because I can't remember the name of the damn thing. Um, <laughs> but he um, he almost would have got away with it. Um, Those meddling kids. God damn, every time. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, the uh, the cop 
kind of coerced him into giving up some of the victims. And because he didn't take him to the police station first and read his, you know, his rights and all that stuff, some of the victims he didn't get charged for. It was, it was fucking nuts, dude. Pretty crazy. That's about it. Not as much I, as normally watch. I feel like true crime documentaries are scarier than horror movies. Oh yeah, that's real. <laughs> nine times, well, not not just necessarily that it's real. It's just nine times out of ten, you're like, what the fuck? How did? Like, how did that happen? Like, how did they let that happen? Because yeah. there's always something where it's like, you know, this could have been shut and closed right here. Oh, but yeah. plot like, twist. Yeah. Somebody yeah, had, fucked up. They had like yeah. a forensic thing that was on HBO. I can't remember the name of it, but it had a guy who was named Dr. Botton. And he had a case. They had a lot of cases on there that were like fucking <laughs> creepy and scary as fuck. But one particular stuck out with me. And there was a prison where these uh, guards were getting murdered. And somehow the bodies were getting dumped uh, out in a, like a landfill type area. And it was really crazy when they find out who was doing it. And uh, it was the uh, prison preacher. And they oh, found snap. him eventually because his teeth were all fucked up and the bite marks all over the dead bodies. Yeah, it was it was fucking nuts, man. What the hell? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And and he was a prisoner in there for like lots of murder. But they gave him so much freedom thinking he changed because of bum 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 Jeebus. <laughs> I think it's like a weird thing where if that were a fiction and they like portrayed this priest suddenly like eating a fucking body or trying to like bite someone to death or whatever the fuck he was doing, we would immediately be like, well, that's fucking weird. What a weird movie. I don't get it. But because it's like a real life documentary, you cannot jump the shark, right? Because oh, no. It's, yeah. It's like, how can you jump the shark on an actual real event? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. His, his, at that point, it's just like, yeah. yeah. And then he I, fucking stuck her finger up his butthole. And I'll be honest with you, Heather. I feel like I feel like my life has jumped the shark. I don't know if that uh, puts it in context for you. Right. Like reality <laughs> has jumped the shark if it were possible. <laughs> Well, and the thing the thing was is uh, he did he he got off on you know obviously seeing them die watching them eyes you know locking eyes, and then he would go into this thing to get off he'd have to bite them as he's you know I'm sure <laughs> getting himself off or whatever. And what's crazy is it wasn't a white dude. <laughs> That's what's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what's crazy. That was racist. Um. <laughs> Damn white people. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. All right. So we're just gonna move on. I don't have time to talk about. Well, <laughs> I've been watching. I've been watching anime. Uh, been in a been in an anime throwback mood, and I watched a little bit. Like I just watched it to fall asleep because there's nothing that does it better than a good movie or a TV. Any movie. horror hentai? Uh, no, just Berserk. Oh, I love Berserk. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I, think I've seen that. I also have been watching Inuyasha, but let's. I'd stop and then I went to Berserk for a good reason. Um, oh, Berserk <laughs> is amazing, man. Mm. I I'm a big fan. Um, and yep. uh, yeah, I don't. We don't. You know, that's it. Let's talk about our fucking segue. You guys, can, can you think of any good segues? Speaking. Oh uh, yeah. I uh, I have two shows this weekend that are stand-up comedy on Valentine's Day is one of them. So I'm, I'm really in the doghouse, th this one. Oh, wow. I'm also, I'm doing a show called Cupid's Rejects mm -hmm. on this Sunday. So um, you could also say that I am as well in a similar position. Maybe we should go on a road trip to a small village in Europe <laughs> where a radio signal can turn all of the women into zombies would it affect me by the way i don't know like how does it how does that work i guess because i have like a women a, a female brain right? this is this is the same thing they're always talking about with the uh, the olympics or whatever when they're trying to disqualify you know or separate the cis and, and trans in in different sports uh, that are gender Oh, don't yeah. let's not let's not get into that. That's a rabbit hole. Yeah, but it's the same thing. <laughs> you're you're, you're trying to isolate what what yeah, is I think different. It was the di dish woman, detergent you know? turned them into zombies. Yeah. Like what is oh, it genetically so it, that makes it, them? Also, the dish detergent 
and the fucking radio signal. <laughs> the now, radio signal that? stopped them. Yeah, it's done. It's done them. Yeah. I, so it was a frequency that only females can hear, and that and would dish, dish detergent can affect. And yeah. dish detergent oh, has the biochemical bastards. agent. So it's it's so a chemical. So only women who wash their clothes. Yeah. Which was to, every or, single or who one. Who do of the them. dishes, right? <laughs> only women who do the dishes. So only women uh, sexist right bastards. Do, do <laughs> gender rules. And you yeah, know this, that, was a, this was a weird one. Wasn't this it? was a weird one. Like, okay, so the movie is called Doghouse. It was made in what year, guys? Uh, whatever Ooh, Archie seconds. Bunker was popular. Archie yeah, Bunker. I, got, I thought that's what it was. It was more in the 70s. I'm going to say 2009, but I'll, I'll double check right now. Um, oh, there's too many dog houses. On it the... says... 2009. Oh, no, yep, 2009. 2009. And you know what? Okay. I'm a okay, I'm a silly bitch. All right. I love <laughs> silly movies. But there was a point and you know what? Stefan saw it on my face and I think it that's the that's the point where Stefan's like, "Oh no, we lost her." Oh no, 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 <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah. I was like <laughs> there was a point I was on board until about halfway. And I don't even remember exactly what the point was. It was almost like there was just an avalanche, like just a, like a, where it should have just been a little like emerald, like bam. And I probably would have kept, you know, I would have kept on board with it. Nope. They just decided to shovel all sorts of shit on top. And I was like, I don't think I can do, I don't think this, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. (laughs) There was just a lot. Was it part of the the epilogue when when we were seeing everybody get like with their situations, or was it more like it was it was like in the middle of the movie? Like I was giving fighting? this, yeah, like I was giving this thing the benefit of the doubt. Like I was I was on board with the fact that the best they could come up with was putting lighter fluid in a you know, Squirt in gun. a super soaker yeah. with a lighter on the end. I was like, you know what? I, I'm okay with this, okay? I've seen worse in other zombie movies. I'm okay with this. I think it was the fact that, honestly, I think it was my favorite character dying. And I was like, really? Like, that mm. was your one saving grace was my fellow oh, yeah. evil dead yeah. loving nerd kid who came up with the smart idea and the poor kid I was like oh my god I was like yeah. what are we gonna do now and then I think that was the point because at that point they were like oh big reveal hey the laundry detergent has biochemical agent this random woman who was running for mayor was like what do you mean like project cat house <laughs> went awry oh, no. where's the sergeant and then she just blipped out of existence and i was like okay yeah. <laughs> now, I was now, like, that, so... now that we're already in spoiler alert territory and by the way there are no spoiler alerts because you should not watch this no, film, not for this movie um, <laughs> no i'm sorry i misspoke spoiler I misspoke. I was trying to uh, say prologue when i said epilogue because there absolutely oh. was no fucking epilogue it was just dumb schmucks at the end and then fucking like we don't care about this film anymore um so that's how it ends uh i don't think that's spoiling anything you can still watch it and get that effect i hate this movie is that a you... spoiler yeah. <laughs> i don't think that's a spoiler <laughs> the spoiler is that it fucking blows uh no okay where where do we you start know what? here's here i've got it guys i've got it is there a part that you did like? The set design. Yeah, and- I definitely, I liked the part where they killed your favorite character. Um, and it was I such liked- a lame death. I was so mad. And I, and I liked the part where they kill everyone else in the movie that they kill. And I wish that they killed everyone. And it mm-hmm. upsets me that anyone survived because I hated every fucking character. And my favorite, <laughs> my favorite was when one of them got like, uh, the ladder gag. He got he got hit with the ladder gag, and the the fat lady that fucking that, that threw him off the ladder was like laughing, like she pranked him, you know, like ha, gotcha, classic, you know, classic. And then yeah. she 
jumps off and fucking sits on him and crushes it from the top row from the fucking yeah. should have had a, a, a wrestling bell bing 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 yeah. that movie it was like the whole thing was like hi this is jackass and this is uh zombie ladder zombie ladder guy falls guy falls zombie ladder fall guy yeah it was exactly it was jackass and it's like oh no johnny knoxville secretly hired some lady to come out and throw me off the ladder and jump on me from the rooftop <laughs> when, when he fell and and then the 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 fat lady fell on top of him someone should have came out with a little clippers and like tagged his hair and like buzzed a little uh, bald spot in his hair that's the only <laughs> thing that sucks is that i wish that everyone else's death was like just as ridiculous as that one mm. you know what i mean and that and but that everyone died die. i wish that everyone died this was this was Oceans the Thirteenth. This was uh, a stupid buddy. Uh, I want to say ensemble, but they didn't ensemble anyone. I mean, there was a couple of good actors in there, but not really nothing. That, I don't, <laughs> this wasn't this wasn't the movie for that. Uh, okay, yeah. I'll give it a compliment. I liked the set design. The set design is uh, was, it was fun. They destroyed a lot of stuff. It looked real. It felt real. It felt like a real environment. They had a cool A-team van, which they didn't fucking use at all. Um, I know. Because it was a piece of shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, but we can find out it's a piece of shit. On, like, if you're going to do the cliche, the car breaks down, wouldn't this one be the one to, to break down? You know, like, why? Whatever. I don't know. Well, uh, it's, I, I think it, it would have been what I would have liked to have seen done with the van was they were all in the van going somewhere dope for the weekend and they got stuck because this shitty van broke down in the middle of like Woodley. Moodley, yeah. Moodley. <laughs> Did I say Woodley? Moodley. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a good... Moodley. Moodley. That's a good premise, uh, Stina. And <laughs> another premise would be this guy finally shows up in the van. Um, they start running over zombies with it. Maybe they kit it out with all this uh, armor on the outside that's all from the toy store and they go around like just <laughs> running the zombies over and then just <laughs> when they think they're getting ahead it breaks down and they're stuck inside it and then they have to do a last stand on top of the van i honestly I think my favorite part was so we talked about this brilliant idea of filling a super soaker with lighter fluid with a they made basically made a flamethrower inside of a mm -hmm. toy store with the nitro best, fluid the best part was they went out they used it on one fucking zombie and then it it itself caught on fire so the guy was like ah and he threw it he didn't know that the whole thing was leaking they accidentally blew up the entire toy store and i was like that's the most thought that's gone into this movie so far was that little piece of realism and it was like a it would have worked had they not been idiots but they ended up just blowing their cover and the toy store i was like that that i can get on board with i did like that <laughs> I, I don't know that for was, my oh, that was sorry, like equally as functional as elon musk's flamethrower it was like the same design um, sorry, go ahead, Stefan. Oh, no, I was just going to say one of my favorite parts is the uh, part with, uh, uh, excuse me, the heavy, heavy, uh, uh, big boned lady uh, with uh, the, <laughs> uh, you know, she has the birthday cake with all the fingers and the uh, womanizer is sitting in the chair and she takes an old uh, electric turkey carving knife and uh, cuts the off his womanizer. fingers. Yeah, <laughs> the only one. <laughs> I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty funny. You like um, that torture that porn, funny. though, don't you? I like horror <laughs> movies. I like horror movies. I don't go with labels, you know. Yeah, that is that something was... <laughs> I liked about this movie. Um, kind of like I liked it, and I also didn't like it. Like I like the concept, but not the execution, and not the tone. But I like I like movies where it's like they're more, the zombies are more complicated than just dumb chasing after you trying to eat you you know what i mean like i like yeah. it when they like like are just like more like turning just straight up evil and 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 twisted and stuff and like demented but also like not necessarily dumb you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i don't know like uh 
like the crazies and stuff like that you know what i mean um but i don't like the way that it just fed into the over the top ridiculous tone and just made it like not a, a real cartoon. fucking movie it was it, a cartoon. yeah exactly it made it it made it too cartoonish like the way that it yeah. actually handled it was a little yeah it was a little too a little too cartoonish i wish there was a little bit more of the realism and they saved those best like cartoony moments mm -hmm. For when I, it really needed to pack like a, oh, I can take a break and kind of laugh. Yeah, I know you guys, uh, I've, I've heard it said that uh, Shaun of the Dead should sue this movie. But I think Looney Tunes needs to sue this movie. For ripping <laughs> off literally every concept they ever had. Like the, the, the Bugs Bunny in drag with lipstick on and the saxophone playing in the background. They had that scene in this movie. They yes, had that. That was a and they scene. Did it with a straight. These were grown ups making this decision, and <laughs> I was waiting for someone, like I said, to throw down like a black circle mat on the ground, and it becomes a hole, and they can escape through that, or maybe the zombies fall. That, that would have been interesting. It would have been interesting. You know, speaking of that drag <laughs> scene, um, I kind of thought it was funny how one of the characters was like, you know, try as I might, I just couldn't find. A, another a, a, a men's clothing to, to 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 change back into and he has to finish out the rest of the movie in a dress and i feel like he's lying and he could have easily <laughs> found some male clothes but he really and that scene when he had to disguise himself as a woman in order to escape the zombies he really found himself and um <laughs> or herself i'm not sure what the pronouns are but, um Heather's I've creating been, subtext. I love it. I feel like I feel like they they just were like, okay, this is you know the real me, and if I you know I can't I, I can't live the lie anymore, so I'm just gonna pretend that I can't find you know any any men's clothes because I can't admit it to anyone mm -hmm. else. You know, I feel like that's where he was at. We can dream, right? and and you know, more power to to them for that. Um, I'm, I don't know if they were trying to make like a like a joke, but I'm reclaiming it because of the fact that he could have found, <laughs> he could have found clothes if he really wanted to change back into some men's clothes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. more power, I hope that they really found themselves. Well, That's here's the I thing about say. that and and the the whole, that drag scene and, and pretty much everything in general. Like it's, it's always said about films like, oh, I like it because it doesn't take itself too seriously. But I feel like this film did not take itself seriously enough it should have been a little more serious should have been like we believe in this premise we're doing it not every fucking moment is a joke not everything we do is a goddamn joke um certain parts yeah. of this are a believable scenario and and we have to figure out how right that makes it actually funny when there is a level of commitment going on mm -hmm. right like i was saying like like the 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 zany character is only funny when there's a straight person and they're like committing to their character and the straight person's committing to their character. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like and that, that creates that tent, that, that, that opposite, that's kind of like funny. Right. Mm -hmm. And if everyone is just like acting like they're at a party in every scene, you know what I mean? And just like, yeah, I mean, it felt like almost like the, the, the movie also wasn't coherent. It didn't like all, it was it was almost like it was sketch comedy and they wrote it scene by scene they kind of improv it in certain ways you know what i mean like nothing felt like yeah and then together. they kind of just edited it, it together yeah I have a synopsis right here too we can also read a group of men travel to a remote village to help a buddy get over his divorce and quickly discover the women in the town have become infected with a virus which turns them into man-eating cannibals wayne <laughs> that's um my, you know Definitely not the worst movie I've ever seen, but uh, definitely not the best movie either. Uh, what I will say is that I think there had they had too many uh, too many main characters. I think there was a little too many. I think there could have been a little bit, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, I think they could have gotten to the action a lot sooner. I think they took a little bit too long to get to that, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and even possibly uh, hired somebody who has even wrote one or two uh, possibly comedy movies, if that was even possible, um, to even help brush up on some of the comedic stuff to make it land a little better. 
Because, I mean, not everything's going to land, uh, but, you know, some stuff could have landed a little better. Um, I did, I did, however, appreciate the gore and the blood and stuff. I thought a lot of that stuff was done really well. Some of um, it. You know, the story, you know, horror doesn't have to have the greatest of stories. I know that's something that, as, as horror fans, we all kind of flip-flop on. Um, but then again, it also depends on the execution because you could have one that has a really lame story, but to execute the movie really well and it still works, but the story is just complete and utter shit. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, <laughs> I think if you're going to like to continue on the story part, the thing that bothered me, because like I said, I like campy B movies. Oh, yeah. Same thing. I like, like, I don't, you know, the story doesn't have to be the, the best greatest. thing yeah. that I've ever seen, but. It does have to, it, there are some requirements. Like if you are going to lead to like, oh, this is how they became zombies, then follow through with it. Like mm-hmm. they didn't, like they kind of led up to this reveal and then the reveal didn't really reveal anything that we didn't know aside from, oh no, the biochemical agent was in the detergent. And that was like, all right, that's it. And then there's a frequency like that apparently females and dolphins can hear, hear, but men can't hear. (laughs) And that just controls them. There was no explanation. There was no, like, even if it was silly and wild, and if there was like a flashback scene, I think like a flashback scene to set it all up would have probably have worked a little me. better for you yeah it would have kept me on board a little bit more but the way that they were that. like all right here's your explanation here's the bad guy that you see for five seconds this is why this is the magical device that'll stop him boom mm-hmm. it's like oh, yeah it on, wasn't man. even cliche level cheap it was yeah. just like unfinished it was like and the editing didn't help the writing was bad and didn't follow through and the editing seemed like it was done by someone who od'd on energy drinks it was just like here's a picture of this and i was just like what is fucking happening right now um i could tell I, we lost uh, keith uh keith really quickly when we were watching it and they were showing <laughs> all the characters and they, and they kept going i was looking at keith keith's like fuck man <laughs> this movie <laughs> This movie got to me. This movie was literally twice as long as it needed to be. No, that's what I was saying. I think it could have been honestly 20 to 30 minutes shorter because they needed to get to shit quicker. It just needed to happen quicker. Literally cut it by half. You know, and and you get through everything you need to say in this movie. Like 40 minutes. I'm not convinced. Oh, go ahead, Heather. Okay, this movie could not have kept me on board if it was a ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. (laughs) (laughs) Zing! Zing! I was going to say the, like, I don't think necessarily it was like, we didn't get to action fast enough. Like we didn't, they set it up, but after the setup, it was just like, all right, they just let them just run around and it almost yeah. did feel kind of like a sketch. So it was like Benny was Hill like, with zombies? It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what it felt like. <laughs> that's what it felt like. Because they, so, they established all the boys will be boys characters. Uh-huh. I mean, fuck it. They've done that with girls before. There's women tropes, you know. So they took all the, the typical, stereotypical men tropes. Obviously not the greatest tropes, but they were there. Like, honestly, why, first of all, the guy that looked like a fucking like a badass punk who just listened to the stress, like a podcaster. Um, it wasn't a podcast. It was like a, a oh the leather jacket stress, and like meditation. Had his little iPod. I wanted him character than anyone else. Keep yeah, going. I wanted him to just lose his shit and just be like fuck the stress free and just go berserk on some zombies. Mm-hmm. Like I thought that would have there you like that's a character development Mm -hmm. like that's something the only person who had a character development was the guy getting divorced and even that was really like not played out very well you could have had yeah Mm -hmm. you could have had that epiphany moment after three pints are you kidding me (laughs) here's how bad this movie was executed i don't even know which character that was i I know that i remember that scene it's like i lost track of who the fuck was who and why i should care He's in Snatch. Pretty early on in this movie. 
<laughs> he's in Snatch. I just he's like watching him die. And then he was saying, he was saying all of the nice guys were the ones that died, and the ones left over were the players. And I was like, I had no idea that that was a thing that just happened. Mm-hmm. Like, was it Snatch or Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels? Uh, I think it's Lockstock, I right? Think it's, I think it's both. Oh, it's both. Oh, okay. I think he might have been in both. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably they're related. Um, yeah. The other thing that confused me is again, like with you know the zombie capability things like this always becomes a question because like it feels like it's pretty arbitrary um and just whatever kind of suits your needs at right time. like they can't break through a window but then they yeah can, they like, could tie, tie people up, up. <laughs> literally i was going to say that they could tie people up but they can't break a window right yeah it, i think they i think that's where they kind of dropped the ball for me too was i won't say that i'm like a stickler for like monster kind of rules like if you're gonna do something that's outside of the norm do it good and make it good like I don't mind but the way that they treated the zombies in this in my opinion is the way that Stephanie Meyer treated vampires in twilight Twilight. (laughs) yeah where oh they can't step out into the sunlight not because they're damned and because they will literally burst into flames no because they will be beautiful and they will shine like (sighs) diamonds what the fuck did you just do to vampires they had the same thing where it was like okay so they can run but they can't run they're they can tie knots but they can't break a window they can they, they don't bite anyone and turn anyone into a zombie. They just kill people. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, for some random unknown reason, they that was like, they transformed the way that Michael Jackson transformed in the beginning of Thriller. Mm-hmm. Like, it was that werewolf scene where they just had, like, extra claws for no reason. Their eyes changed from normal color to, like, yellow, and they were just mutants out of nowhere and i was like what are y'all doing with this zombie i was gonna say supposed to be a zombie right super (laughs) underwhelming too like they literally just got longer fingers and (laughs) like maybe some spikes like i was hoping for tentacles like some look (laughs) now with a four million dollar budget they ain't gonna have no tentacles (laughs) (laughs) Tentacles. this is one of those ones where it's not like a, a supernatural or a curse that that makes the zombie or like whatever the the being is that it, it injects in the other being's blood however that plays out it's like the man-made um you know mutation like something got into the to the whatever like we yeah we created with- some toxic sludge or or a certain frequency and it caused that mutation and thing and for some reason the woman who ran for mayor of this town was like you know what we're going to try it on my town. No rhyme or reason. We mm-hmm. don't know why she decided to do this. Pay off. But cocaine. it was like. It was cocaine. I, even if they would have said that, like, you know, <laughs> I'm a drug lord. This was no. the, this was the trade off. And it's like, oh, okay. So He's that's in the pocket of big zombie. Things. Yes. <laughs> anything. Zombie core. Give me something. Give me something to propel my imagination. If you really want me to suspend my disbelief, you got to give me something to keep that mm-hmm. or else it's just silly. You know, it's silly in an unflattering way. Yeah. You know, now, I know when uh, my buddies and I watched it uh, for the first time, I mean, we we liked a, a, a huge amount of it. But then there was also a huge amount of us that were just like, is it is it over yet? Is, <laughs> is it over? Yeah. You know, I mean like i said it's not it's not the worst british horror movie i've ever seen but definitely not the best it's definitely not the no. best um I but in 2009 that. money four million dollars uh you know to the average person as myself it may not seem like it's uh a lot and it really isn't when you think about what it costs for all the different things to even make a movie in the first place would it have been better if the guy had another i don't know uh, eight million dollars probably not maybe i don't know it's really you know it's really uh, hard to say um did the people you know what did this movie go over a lot better in uh in london than it did over here quite possibly you know there are a lot of uh different yeah. slang words that were used in the film that i most likely ne- never really thoroughly heard or translated in my life for me to be like hey that's hilarious because i know exactly what he's saying when he's 
using uh, certain slang that we don't use over here, right? No, there's people, there's, there's some stuff in there that's, that said that, you know, buy it. No. a lot of American people <laughs> wouldn't know what a tosser is. They wouldn't know what that is. I know your average is. person wouldn't know what that is. No, so, but, but so how can you in log stock the comedy translated enough? Even though they use plenty of they use more slang in those, it's harder to understand people in those movies. They no, I know, but my a character that you can't understand and it's hilarious. And in this movie, they just didn't have anything to say that they were just dumb. They yeah, they could have all been Brad Pitt from Snatch in this. So ba basically, what I was trying to say was. Is there's right, there's right, slang, right. there's slang in the in the movie that a lot of people don't get. I mean, I don't want to use an excuse as if they had better actors, the movie could have been better because I've seen movies with great actors that suck ass, uh, that had way bigger budgets as well. So, um, you know, I just think it should have been shorter. Um, I did like the gore, uh, the blood. Mm -hmm. um, zombies were okay. I mean, my my biggest complaint uh, is going to be a little bit different from everybody else's. I didn't like when uh, they'd show the top of the zombie and then when they would show the whole body, I got to see a healthy person's underbody and their belly and their back. And that wasn't painted like the, their face. So for me, that took me out of the movie because I didn't see that they were zombified down below. It just looked like it even more enhanced it. Okay, it's just a person in makeup. And there was one yeah. set of boobies so. that we got to see. So uh, so five stars, Stefan, or what? what? For me, um, let's see if it's a one out of five for myself, I'd probably give it like a two or two and a half for myself. Okay. I own it though. I don't hate it. I enjoy it, but I'm not going to watch it like 10 times a year. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Maybe uh, once every uh, three years. <laughs> uh, Christina, what, what about, what do you want to give it? Give it a um, I'm going to give it a two. I'm going to give it a solid two because even though I do agree with Stefan that like, you know, the slang may have, you know, it may have uh, detoured like some people. I just don't think that for me, it wasn't the comedy or the jokes going over my head. I understood the jokes. It was just the lack of the plot and the writing and the effort everywhere else and the writing. I think that was the real <clears throat> for me. So at two. Mm -hmm. All right, Keith, give it a rating right now. Don't think about it. Negative zero. I was going to give it a half star for set design, um, but then I think it deserves another half for gore effects because it, it, they, were, they were practical. They were good. That, you know, uh, the, not the costuming of the zombies. Just when somebody got slashed, head splatter open, it was decent. You know, it was effective. So I'm going to give it one star. Okay. I give it five stars um, because this was the most amazing movie I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, first of all, the number of boobs in the movie was astounding. Astounding, you know? It was, it was, and there was really great, there was, it wasn't just like, like, like big titty goth GF sitting in, in a corset. You had, you had all sorts of different boobs. Um, <laughs> I can't tell if this is a bit, Heather. And uh, no, definitely, this, definitely. I'm giving it. No, it's not just the boobs. It's not just the boobs. This movie, start to finish, really. Um, it's really incredible. It's it's a it's a satire of. You're gonna make, you're gonna make Keith cry, dude. <laughs> it's a satire, it's a satire of. Meta. This is like, too I fucking love, meta. I can't. I love. I love what they did. They went in such a beautiful direction because they took. This is already a better performance than the. They fucking took movie. everything good about Shaun of the Dead and they took it out, and then they replaced it with just not just like ninety nine cent store copies that made no sense and had no coherency. <laughs> and that to me is like it's like a real set. It's like a real like we're gonna take this parody movie and we're gonna give give it the middle finger. You know what I mean? They're just like really shoving it in the face of a parody movie and and it and and you're right it does make it like a cartoon and you know what i love like i said i've been watching lots of anime lately so um cartoons <laughs> make me horny so uh, what's your what's your real star rating because five <laughs> keep stars. watching to get over I'm with it i'm not buying it I i'll don't give the buy average it. by the way if if we're doing bizarro world uh like heather bit here 
five equals zero, so I'm going to put in zero. <laughs> so negative five. <laughs> negative five is what I meant, guys. This okay? was negative an incredible five. look. I really loved the theme of misogyny going on and, like, how you treat women. And, like, the nice guys finish last. But, but you think nice guys finish last, right? But at the same time, it's like you got to just learn to love yourself first and not let your happiness be dependent on another person. You know what I mean? If you're out there listening, um, Heather is under duress and uh, she's she put the du- duress codes in that language. So we are sending the police to our house. And <laughs> yeah, there's, there's something going on. Zombies, zombies, <laughs> are really, zombies are really a metaphor for how a, relate, a toxic relationship can dismantle the self and how women Heather, get, you're going so deep they right now I just... and they get they get their self gets gets stripped away by by advertisements in radio is this an invasion of the body snatchers bit like, like what's, their what's, gender role like, well i will say the this laundry detergent is saying how the gender role strips away their personhood and turns them into zombies so okay <laughs> <laughs> Where, where we're at, just so you know, guys. Bring there, back our Heather. With, with Heather's ironic five, we're still at a two and a half star average on this movie. So. Okay, that's too high of an average. So whatever the, the average for this movie needs to be about uh, maybe one star, one and a half. One one and change, yeah, one and a quarter. No. Yeah, that's so out of five? I think it's at least a two. The average that make my rating that. I don't care if I have to be negative 99 stars in order to send the average in the direction. <laughs> I well, Heather, if the, you if you gave it a one and a half stars, wouldn't that average that out to one and a half? I'm calculating my star rating in order to make sure that the group star rating is one and a half stars. If you, Heather, that is. if you if you give it a uh, zero rating, this movie has a one and a third star average. Okay, I even though I said two and a half, that's actually oh. what it deserves. Oh yeah. my God, we landed right on the truth. Yeah, I <laughs> two and a half. I can't two, say two, I was surprised. Two, one and zero. All right, I'll give it. Go. I'll give it a half a star for one for one actually good pair of pits. Yeah, um, I, th- I think what would have made the movie also better, really quick, in uh, in my opinion, is if the ending was different. All the guys die. Mm-hmm. And then they slowly pan to the forest because the guy tells them not to go in the forest. And then you see that it actually reached another city mm-hmm. and that it's become a global pandemic. I think that would have been a better ending than the ending we got. That's in totally, yeah. that, Stefan, that's a great pitch. And I agree with you. Change the ending, change the beginning. Yeah, because they never acknowledge the like forest whatsoever. 99% of the metal. They don't really yeah. everything about it. In fact, just watch Shaun of the Dead instead of this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, that, that has flaws too. Heather, what do you got for us that's not this movie? Okay, so <clears throat> oh boy, um, we're gonna have Kevin uh, Heisinger on next week, and I asked Kevin, "What do you, what are your favorite movies?" And he gave me a few movies, and I was like, "Name some more." Um, <laughs> His first slot, we were like, ah. <laughs> already picked those, bro. Don't pick those. No. We got a few, and we got a few that we could that I could stand. As well as I just really wanted to see uh, uh, this, this movie. Oh, I think um, I know which one. I know which one. I think you picked. It's the one you keep talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. All right, lay it on us. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Is this working? Yeah. Can you get the sound? Do you have the sound? Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> A little choppy. But... Oh, it's a neon one. Okay. Oh, and we'll go. Oh, yeah. This is the one I was telling you you guys about, actually. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, no, this is David Cronenberg's son. Yeah, Brandon Cronenberg. Yep. This is the one I was talking about a while back. Is there any relation? Yeah, that's his son, David Cronenberg's son. Canadian made movie. <clears throat> yeah, we can rent this on YouTube for 99 cents. I think it's YouTube. What's 
And I think you'd like this one, Keith. Yeah, whenever something's eerie and it is a lot of mystery, maybe something supernatural, I'm down. No, no, no. This isn't, it's not, this is more sci fi. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, it's not um, supernatural. It's all part of my buffet. I need to know. I need to know what she's done to me. It's become dangerous. Where is she? Come out or I'll do it! Sometimes. It's like a suspense thriller with horror stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a horror, whatever. Sean Bean, I bet he dies. Uh, Fuck. Of course, because it's Sean Bean. All right, so that was Possessor. Sean Bean dies dies as often as Mr. Bean should. (laughs) Oh, jeez. How rude. So I honestly didn't bother to get the trailers for the other two because, uh, you you know, it's pretty familiar. Oh, one so this must be popular picks. One, one of them is The Witch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know I know. Uh, Keith would love that one probably. The, the Witch? And, and yeah, the, the, the Witch. The only problem with that movie is it's really slow. But I think, you, I think you'd like it, Keith. The, 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 the Witch. <clears throat> and the other one is... Um, Brandon Cronenberg, the son of Wait, Lonnie hold on. What's Irish. going on? Your YouTube is still playing. There you go. Okay. So, the, the next one is uh, American. Can you show him the trailer for The Witch? I, I think he, I, we should show Keith the trailer for The Witch. But you want to see the trailer for The Witch? The huh? Yeah, we could do The Witch if you want. Yeah. It's not a long trailer. Yeah. What was okay. the third? What was the third one? American Psycho. Oh, okay. I mean, that's really a Huey Lewis music video. <laughs> I love that movie. It's hard to believe that's directed by a woman and not a man because of the nature and the content of the movie is what I'm saying. Those are my favorite directors, women who just... Oh, no, that's, it made me love the movie even more. <laughs> yeah, and they take a genre that is not... Um, typically a woman's genre and then they just slay it Ugh. oh yeah that's like the uh soska the soska sisters yeah i was gonna Hello. say oh. um mm. what's her name uh she was married to james cameron she did point break and the hurt locker yeah i think there's oh the director people. Catherine bigelow yes yeah, it's, it's more to being like organized great. Consistent near dark and, and uh and getting what you want out of the talent than it is to you know like, I think if somebody just has technical skill, they can apply it to a lot of different genres. So I don't think that's uh, gender-based. Into this wilderness to find. I'll, I'll explain what I mean after this. Leave it King. Our father's houses. Buffering. For what? This summer. For the kingdom of God. Let us pray. This looks familiar, actually. I'm sure you've seen the trailers. They, they promoted the shit out of this. I may have seen the movie. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I did see this a while ago. Yeah. There's some sort of uh, possessed uh, livestock. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Oh, you've never seen this? There you go. You might you might like it, Stina. It's a little slow, but you might like it. I like any horror movie that's in the woods on a cloudy day, you know, and it's like just. Atmospheric things that are very atmospheric. Look goddamn nowhere and desolate looking, you know. That's a good environment to to uh, <laughs> put your horror movie in. I did I did see this a while back. I'd be interested. Oh, in Lord, I'm not weak, you know, help me and I'll leave my sin. 
So what's it going to be, The Witch, uh, American Psycho, or Possessor? Personally, I choose Possessor. Um, I think, uh, are we ready to vote on that? Yeah, because I'll, I'll go with Possessor, too. I mean, I, I didn't know if you wanted a drum roll, because that pretty much seals the deal. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much seals the deal. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, we well, could always make it. vote anyway. Oh. I was going to pick American Psycho because neither of those movies look like something I'd want to watch. Mm. <laughs> so we'll watch Possessor. Maybe well, hey, it's hip to be, be square, Christina. So that's kind of my whole thing. <laughs> All right. So the Possessor is what we're watching next week. What was, what was Heather going to pick? My vote doesn't count. <laughs> See, and that's where, like, if we need a tiebreaker, I think the person who's made the picks, their vote sometimes, not all the time, sometimes could count as two votes if we need a tiebreaker type thing. Well, you I mean, if each of us, if, say, we all picked a different movie, Heather's vote would have yeah. been the tiebreaker. Because how's it going to work next week when there's five of us, when the voting comes to the movies? That person's vote doesn't count? Yeah, his vote doesn't, we don't need his vote to count. Anyways, we can get into the semantic guts of this podcast later when we're not <laughs> still recording. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, do, you, do you just want to start the meeting now? So, uh, uh, sales. Hamburgers. Hamburgers. <laughs> if you're out there listening, please put in the chat or the um, comments what you think we should do with our podcast. Ha- hamburgers. Um, please help. But, no, but guys, pizza. Hey, pizza. Talk sales. Um, <laughs> Sales have not been great. Uh, <laughs> sales have not been great. <laughs> uh, 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 Stina. Pizza? Do you have any? I, I'm, a, I'm asking you because you're the woman. And I need to, like, I want you to know that you're heard. Um, we hear you. I'm here. I, yeah. I hear you. I, I watch Check. as you. Check. I watch Can as you guys you hear me? Yeah, I watch. Check, check, one, two. Watch you say words that mean things to me, and I'm listening. Um, Thank all you. right. Anyways, goodbye. <laughs> See you guys. See you next, guys. As next we episode. watch, possess, right. and review the most amazing movie. Yes, and get your ladies some chocolate flowers, or you'll be in the doghouse as well. You know what? This this needs to. Can 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 can. That was a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>